and welcome back to Adventure Story Channel videos. Today, my dear friends, we will start and continue our um, next lesson, let's say chapter for the boilers. And we will stand a little bit and stay on the boilers controls. We have different variety of controls. So let's see what it includes. We have the gauge board, we have the water level control, the feed water control level, the pneumatic actuators, differential pressure, the pneumatic connections, and the valve positioner C part PS2. Let's look a little bit how it looks like. This is all the parts include the mechanical and the electropneumatic uh, system. We can see the assembly, how it is installed here and how it's positioned. So this is the stroke, the stroke of the valve, the open and close position. And you can see that there is also a different setup for different degrees. 30 or 90 degrees in different range depends uh, the application so you can see also for 33 and 90 degrees the stroke the attachment of the moving parts and this is actually uh, how the power is transferred to the valve through the actuator. Supply air pressure is from 1.4 to 7 bar. So we have supply air to actuator air and then from the actuator it will regulate uh, the pressure supply to the valve. Here you can see some electrical connections, the plus and the minus. Uh, so it's four to 20 milliamperes here. And you can see all the settings running. So first of all, we need to set up the degrees and then check uh, mechanical plus uh, press yes plus and minus press plus and minus to move faster and then you set up in the horizontal position here the valve now we're going to switch from p manual mode to configuration mode Press and hold this button. Uh, for those uh, who will purchase, let's say, the Chief Engineer's uh, subscription here on the channel, all this uh, course, which is which contain about 820 pages, will be sent uh, through the email to the link. Please contact me uh, through my email or let's say Instagram also as well and I will send it to you. Uh, next thing is uh, we are in the configuration mode now. So press to move uh, parameters up. And then move parameters down let's make a factory reset to look for parameter 50 press plus button until ok appears so you can just scroll these pages and see what will appear next so press plus button until ok appears now we have ok Reset to factory settings completed in this stage. And now we're going to parameter one UFCT. 
So now we are in one UFCT. The settings of each parameter can be changed with plus and minus button. So the next page is a set point 33 degrees. And this is what we need. Finally, we go to parameter 4. Initial process will be set in the bottom. A process depends on the actuator and takes some minutes. At any time, you can interrupt the process. Press the plus button until initialization starts. Press of initialization started. You can see here all the steps. And let's see how the video of initialization uh, are shown. Let's see if it's a video. Okay. Let's see how the, the initialization uh, will be done. Okay. This is how it looks like. To give you, let's say, an e example, um, and you you will be able also to see this is how it started the installation. Okay, let's move on to the next stage. If during the initialization you get error run 2, current span value exceeded, adjust the friction clutch on the bottom of a C part. Uh, adjust, and this is how it looks, uh, adjusting out of range. Uh, correct, this is, the co this is the correct reading. Then, to continue press the initialization uh, press plus button in run 3 mode during the in initialization you can adjust the traveling time with the restrictors and let's see press plus my, uh, minus button now we can adjust monitor we'll change to letter u and d showing each time so you can see adjustment uh, with an allen of restrictors to achieve traveling time from 1 to 1.5 seconds. And this is, yes, our allen where it goes here, this one. Press the plus button to continue initialization. In run 3, you can do a leakage test when traveling time up and down is shown. As uh, the traveling time appears, press the plus button to make leak test. Leakage test running. Leakage test is process. Uh, finish of the leakage test and press the plus button to continue the initialization process. Run 5. Initialization successfully completed. Finish. Mm -hmm. By pressing the hand button, you are going back to the configuration mode. Select gear for uh, 33 degrees. Tighten the clutch by the screwdriver. Switch from the configuration mode to P manual mode. Hold until firmware is shown in display. And this is uh, the firmware. After release the hand button, P manual menu. When we are in the P manual menu, we check the wall traveling range. So now you see 99% open. And press minus and plus to close in manual mode. Quick close. By press hand button, we bring back to auto mode. Uh, this is how a piston works with air so it's a piston and it travels in this in that direction uh, left to right so when the air flows from this cylinder from this cylinder it will be expelled and reverse also uh, let's see what another things that we have in the boiler? It's the insulation and the leakages. 
uh, when we have uh, bad insulation and leakages all this will reduce the efficiency will increase the fuel consumption for sure because we will have that losses or that thermal losses and boiler will start also stop frequently which will have also an impact on the nozzles on the dirtiness of the nozzles and on the system and also uh, the nozzle gets uh, dirty faster for sure and the boiler itself uh, because during the start stoppage there is some uh, effect created that uh, the fuel it's not burning totally so there is more residues accumulated uh, in the furnace of the boiler boiler pressure goes up and down uh, really fast and this makes a boiler really unstable uh, through thr through the view of uh, the thermal load that it's always reduced and increase so it makes like the boiler to extend and shrink all these conditions which also reduce the life and um, the operation of the boiler keep boiler pressure steady as much as possible this will reduce the risk of uh, the gaskets and flanges to break down and reduce risk and stress to the material to the piping material and everything that's associated with uh, that system main usage of the steam uh, on board is for heating systems such fuel water preheating oils preheating purification also for water heating let's say for the accommodation it has a varieties of application and also for the cleaning let's say some equipment with the steam it's also available in the engine room and the most important thing that we have the steam also is the cargo heating uh, it's really important to say that the water itself it's really really difficult media to control because you have to control the chemical side of the water and also the water itself has a lot of uh, different stages uh, it can be also solid liquid or steam and each uh, item has a lot of impact uh, on the performance on the total performance and consumption so uh, i have seen also systems that have uh, tracing and it's also really really high effective because one of the thing is that they keep the load steady through the time and also uh, they can transfer the heat really really good uh, the cargo handling itself it means that we are driving steam turbines which will unload uh, our cargo in our case crude oil and you can see also uh, the boiler change state and this is what uh, it's more uh, interesting that how much heat it's necessary to change uh, each phase um exhaust gas boiler it's a good example of change of state so if you are uh, ever been close to the exhaust gas boiler and you will look to the inlet and the outlet temperature you can see that the inlet temperature of the water that is supplied there it's higher than the outlet so you will think that the exhaust gas boiler will work as a cooler but in this case not all the energy that the exhaust gas boiler gave to that hot water is to change the state so it will insert as liquid but when it will go outside of the exhaust gas boiler it will be already a steam steam change state inside a gas boiler and from there it enters to auxiliary boiler steam drum so you can see how much energy it's necessary to change only the state so we can see that there is 
only a steady phase we are giving heat but nothing changed here and then suddenly when we give the proper amount of heat it will turn to gas and will evaporate here it is here how the diagram looks like we have a circulating pump which with draw a water which will be also condensated already but heated hot enough and then entering here to the exhaust gas boiler the managing exhaust gases will pass through the tubes and slowly the water as it dries here it will turn to steam the temperature difference here will be the same or at the outlet it will be a little bit lower and then it goes to the steam drum here and from the steam drum it will provide all the necessary feeding and supply to the system to the steam system that's why when your main engine is running it will keep uh, one auxiliary boiler uh, steady the other one will be on maintenance and your exhaust gases just will help to maintain the supply that's necessary the ship to be run let's say to run one heavy fuel oil purifier one labor purifier or if you like an auxiliary diesel engine purifier uh, by, but in my case i only use that one uh, on a stop engine and never on a running engine because you have the possibility that the purifier will overflow so uh, let's see another state that during the standby um, what can happen let's say if you are sailing in the smaller vessel or if you are sailing let's say on a bigger uh, vessel so what you can uh, face and when you, what you can see when the vessel start to increase uh, the speed uh, at the beginning everything here is cold or if you have stopped your circulating pump for a long time and you reset it back again because you need your always your circulating pump running and pump water through the exhaust gas boiler otherwise uh, the tubes will be melt and will be damaged so what can happen you can have a sudden return of the water from the system and the level for sure will be rise this is due to the sudden evaporation and sudden boiling of the water which is here so all that amount of water and condensate will be suddenly pressed here and you will see the increase of the level uh, on the exhaust uh, on the auxiliary boiler in this case you can drain some of the water or you can leave it and it will uh, adjust uh, through the time but uh, for sure you will not need a alarm to be on that's why you will, can drain or should blow, uh, uh, blow down the boiler a uh, blow down it's necessary to be done uh, also far away from the ports due to impurities uh, that, that can be uh, expelled to the water a uh, level of the water can be increased for sure and that's we have explained here and this is happening yes due to evaporation uh, effect of the water inside and the drum lifts uh, auxiliary boiler start and stop uh, frequently that's true it's not that stable as you are sailing let's say uh, with a set of rpms and in case you have really really low steaming your boiler will still continue to start and stop uh, another thing that it's really necessary to told you that if you have let's say rpms really really high it has an effect to cool down the exhaust uh, gas economizer because the flow of exhaust is so high that it can it does not have enough time to transfer all that heat 
So there is also an optimum speed for uh, the exhaust gas boiler to give as much as possible heat transfer. And also it depends from the cleanliness of the exhaust gas boiler economizer. A good practice if you have a tube type uh, economizer, for example, um, if you have a tube type economizer, you can see that you can blow it by air uh, really easy and all the dust and all that thing will go out. So you can see here how the flow of the hot gases are done. So it pass through the tubes and there is uh, three main uh, transfer of the heat is through the radiation, through the transfer from uh, one media to another. As you can see here, all the parts, the burner casing, the air casing, the safety valves. Safety valves also plays a really, really important role. Uh, steam outlets here, outlet box, furnace, membrane wall, water drum, manhole for the inspection. And here we have in a different uh, overview. This we can call, let's say, Mitsubishi. A boiler it's the design is uh, really really nice i love that yes it's mitsubishi it's really nice because the entrance is also easy easy for inspection for cleaning and it's really really handy all the systems that are installed there here you can see this is a vlcc vessel and has a uh, the safety manifold here is the place where uh, the safety valve will expel the excessive steam so here it will lead to a safe uh, distance and a safe place and this is how it must be designed and this is a example of a really bad design so all the steam will be expelled in the engine room and for sure here will have some uh, fire alarm also um, <laughs> uh, will be uh, initiated. Let's see again uh, how it looks like. It gives a really, really good feeling of what is going on inside the boiler, how it works, how it operates, and how it flows. And here we have a, this is a vertical type, this is a the horizontal type. The horizontal type boilers, and we can see this can be also a, a let's say, thermal oil boiler. They are more prone to cracks and to the stress. Uh, the vessel design also must be as much as possible uh, vibrationless. Uh, because these vibrations also transfer to the equipment. And here we can see another type of boilers. Another one, so we can see also uh, this is some kind of uh, exhaust gas economizer which shows a, a different uh, type of piping. Here we can see a composite boiler which has both uh, exhaust gas and the burner itself. It's more for a small type of vessels. Steam demand of the vessel. So steam demand of the vessel depends from the conditions. The weather temperatures uh, and from, let's say, from the conditions, what we mean if uh, we are discharging uh, if let's say we have some demand for uh, additional purification to run two purifiers it will increase um, the weather the temperatures for sure if it's cold we have much increase of uh, the steam consumption because the cooling down of the system it will be much faster 
Another thing is how clean are the tubes. Also play a really, really big role because your boiler is working, but if the heat is not properly transferred, some kind of uh, insulation from the carbon that deposits there will reduce the efficiency. Also, the consumption of the steam, how much steam we have opened to the bunker tanks. And really important to share with you is that it's not only uh, how much um, steam, let's say, you consume. It also has to do with regarding the diameter and the pressure drop in the system. Because uh, how much often your boiler will stop and stop it depends also uh, how much pressure drop you have in your system. So the more steam you are open, the more valves you are open, the more pressure drop you will have, the more your boiler will work. So you have to do an optimal setup for that as well. Uh, economizer also low output. If uh, the economizer is not properly designed, or uh, there is a different design, it can have a low output, so you will have a much uh, increased consumption than uh, if the design of the economizer will be much better. And also if you are going to maneuvering, also it affects uh, your steam consumption and also the production as well, because due to maneuvering, you do not have a steady supply of the exhaust gases and it goes really, really dramatically down. Uh, so I will stop here. I will not make it more uh, more detailed. Hope you like these details as well. And we will continue next um, chapter. Thank you very much and see you soon from the Story Channel. Bye-bye.